Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Allah Khan here and continuing the topic of uh, the previous videos we saw the intrinsic, the definition of intrinsic. Today we see for extrinsic semiconductors. Extrinsic semiconductor right and intrinsic were the purest form of those uh, semiconductors whereas the extrinsic are they are the no impure forms right impure which means some levels of impurity have been added impurity have been added to intrinsic materials Okay, fine. Now, uh, what are these impurities? So these are n-type and p-type uh, impurities are added to form n-type and p-type materials. N-type and p-type materials, which we see in a great detail, not after this video. After this video, we see the energy levels. And after that, so one video after the next, we see uh, these n-type and p-type materials for now you need to understand that these are just impure materials which means impurities have been added to the pure form of these semiconductors and it is quoted in the book that one part impurity levels impurity levels of one part in 10 billion are added in 10 billion are added which means if you have total of a 10 billion atoms of a pure conductor so you add one one atom of impurity so this is called as one uh, impurity level of one part in 10 billion all right now uh, so let me read out the book let's say uh, one of the most important technological advances of recent decades have been the ability to produce semiconductor materials of very high purity recall that this was one of the most uh, one of the problems encountered in the early use of silicon it was easier to produce germanium to the required uh, purity levels okay now impurity levels of one part in 10 billion are common today with uh, with higher levels attainable for large scale integrated circuits which means we can have a purity level of even more than this that we have mentioned one might ask whether these extremely high levels of purity are necessary are these necessary to purify these uh, the, at this high level so the answer is yes because they certainly are if one considered that addition of one part of impurity per million in a wafer of silicon material can change the material from a relatively poor conductor to a good conductor of electricity in one billion parts uh, what is the figure million one million parts in one million part if you add one atom of impurity in a silicon uh, wafer so it can change the properties of a silicon from a very bad conductor to a very good conductor of electricity this is just for one part in a million part so which means that this impure this the purity level is very very necessary the ability uh, no no we, we obviously have to deal with a whole new level of comparison when we deal with the semiconductor medium the ability to change the characteristics of material through this process is called doping something that germanium silicon and gallium arsenide readily accept the the what the ability to change the characteristics of material the ability to change the characteristics of a material by adding impurities you know is called doping this term will be used quite frequently this n-type and p-type material that I said 
So this is formed by the doping. So this we also understand in a great detail over there. Till now you only understand that this is what? We are changing the characteristics of any material from a good conductor to a bad conductor, from a bad conductor to a good conductor, anything like that by adding impurities in a pure material. This is called doping. And this is something that, this is something, this doping, that the germanium, silicon and the other transistor the other material the gallium gallium arsenide readily accepts you know you can add uh, impurities to these semiconductors and you can change the properties very easily okay this is called doping the doping process is discussed in detail in the section 1.5 and 1.6 which we'll be doing okay one of the one important and interesting difference between semiconductors and uh, conductor is their reaction to the application of heat all right application of heat so i won't write it down i would read it out from the book what happens when you apply heat to a conductor when you apply heat to a conductor so vibration starts within three electrons right vibration you are you have given it energy so it starts motion right and due to its motion it uh, displays it from its original position and it further the current the allow of current is further also reduced all right so with the application of heat the conduction of a conductor reduces conduction level reduces right whereas for for a for a semiconductor or insulator but in this case let's say for the semiconductor what happens that the the energy provided they give energy to the valence electrons and they make free them they free them all right valence electrons become free and which means what that the conduction by the application of heat or any other energy the conduction of semiconductors increases so i will read it out from the book one important and interesting difference between the semiconductors and the conductors is their reaction to the application of heat for conduction for conductor the resistance the resistance increases uh, with an increase in heat this is because the number of carriers in a conductor do not increase significantly with temperature but their vibration pattern about a relatively fixed location makes it increasingly difficult for a sustained flow of carriers through the material right let's say this is the free electron we we get give it energy it now starts vibration it now starts vibration so over here the energy is flowing now upper it will block it the down it's, it's vibrating so energy another energy coming here it hits it goes back so the vibration affects the further coming of energy all right now uh, materials that react in this manner are said to have a positive temperature coefficient which means that these conductors have a positive temperature coefficient okay uh, the conduction has decreased and it's also written in the book that the resistance to other increases all right now the next point is what uh, semiconductor materials however exhibit an increased level of conductivity with an application of heat this is because as the temperature rises an increasing number of valent electrons absorb sufficient thermal energy to break the covalent bond and to contribute to the number of free carriers and this property therefore it says that semiconductor materials have a negative temperature coefficient so i will write it over here semiconductors have a negative temperature coefficient is that fine positive temperature coefficient in indicates a decrease in the conductivity with the application of heat whereas the negative uh, temperature coefficient indicates an increase in the conductivity of the material with the application of heat that's all about this topic the next topic is 
energy level but before that i have some points written over here that's about the resistivity all right so what is resistivity resistivity is the resistance of i believe unit length and unit area and unit volume of a substance so resistivity and you know what this is from your previous knowledge this is equal to this is of course uh, 1 over conductivity of the material right this resistivity is denoted by rho and this one conductivity is let's say denoted by sigma yes okay so i've written over here and uh, this resistivity and conductivity these are both the properties of a material different for each material these are properties of a material properties of a material which means different for different materials right they are different for different materials is that fine now what do you have if the resistivity is high of course the current would be low conduction a conductivity is basically the conduction it refers to the conduction of the electrons right so if the resistivity is high it would mean that the conduction is low resistivity is high would imply the conductivity to be low and if the conductivity is high this would imply the resistivity to be low so if resistivity is high it means less conduction this is less conduction less conduction and no sorry this is more con uh, more conduction because resistivity less conduction because resistivity is high over here conductivity is high so we have more conduction so which means the resistivity values for uh, the insulators has to be the most right and we have some figures over here for conductors and especially if you are dealing with copper the example of copper is here that the resistivity is 10 to the power negative 6 ohm meter resistivity of copper is 10 to the power negative 6 ohm meter ohm meter is the symbol of it and how is it so you might be knowing it ohm centimeter right this is in ohm centimeters so this is a very low value right now similarly for uh, insulators you have uh, for example we hear the example of mica is given for insulator the resistivity of mica is what it's given over here is 10 raised to the power 12 ohm centimeter 10 raised to the power 12 ohm centimeter which is a very high value okay this is for a uh, conductor this is for insulator and what do we have for semiconductors so for semiconductor the value would be in between these two and we have the example of silicon and germanium so for silicon it's 500 into 10 raised to the power 3 which means it's 5 into 10 raised to the power 5 let's say oh, here we have it this is for silicon is 500 into 10 to the power 3 ohm centimeter so this is a high value which is 5 into 10 to 5 or 5 i can say 5 into 10 raised to the power 5 5 into 10 raised to the power 5 right and similarly the uh, this for germanium is also given which is equal to 50 ohm per centimeter 50 ohm centimeter not per centimeter so now have a look for for the conductors the value of this resistivity is the least for insulators it's the most whereas for semiconductors it is in between the copper and the insulator not a very high value not a very low value in between them so from this i could state that the uh, resistivity of the conductor is the least right the resistivity of semiconductors is greater than that and the resistivity of uh, insulators is the most and this would imply that the current through the conductor the current i through the conductor is the greatest of all the current through the semiconductors is a moderate form and the current through insulators is the least of all 
So that's all about it, right? That's all about the resistivity, that's all about the intrinsic, <coughs> sorry, and extrinsic materials. From the next video, we start the energy levels and we start discussing the energy bank diagram, something important. That's all about today. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.